Good to see you all, and good to see you online as well, wherever you may be uh, Bible studying with us today. Good to have you. My name is Michael Beneshek. I'm your warm heart senior pastor, and it's just a joy to be with you here on this beautiful day, maybe one of the last beautiful days that we have for a few weeks. Well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for this just plain beautiful fall day. Uh, for the changing of the seasons, we give you thanks. For the uh, end of the of the hundreds of, of temperatures, we give you thanks. For the harvest that is coming in, we give you thanks. And for, uh, for the days ahead, for the days ahead that remind us uh, to stay inside and, and chat a little while with friends and family, we give you thanks. For the holidays that are coming up and the Bible study before us, all these things, we give you thanks. Amen. Well, my daughter, who is 15, she, she got a Bible. She, she, she got a Bible when she was a child. She got a Bible uh, from the bishop a little later on, and then she got her youth Bible at third grade, and then she got a youth Bible. She, she is Bible-fied, but she went to Barnes & Noble to buy her own Bible that I've never bought my own. Like, they're all the same, but okay, knock yourself out. So she, she got it a while back. She's reading it. Uh, about three weeks ago, she came to me and said, what is this Sodom and Gomorrah story? <laughs> Lot gave away his daughters to do that. And I'm like, and we had a nice little chat about. Hmm. Last night she came to me. Last night she came to me and she said, Jacob gave up his birthright for some soup. Like, yes. Yes, he did. Uh, the Bible's weird. You're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go through the story. <laughs> and uh, she goes, well, your, your sermons lately have been hitting where I've been reading, so that's nice. I'm like, well, that's good. That's good. We're in Abraham. We're doing Abraham's altars. Awesome. So uh, we are, we're also with Jacob here in chapter 28 of Genesis. If you're joining us online, that's where we are, Genesis 28. Let's do verses. I'm going to pause because I know where the microphone's going. Dun, 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 dun. Verses 1 through 5. So Isaiah called for Jacob and blessed him. Then he commanded him, Do not marry a Canaanite woman. Go at once to Padam Aram, to the house of your mother's father, Bethuel. Take a wife for yourself there from among the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. May God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful and increase your numbers until you become a community of peoples. May he give you and your descendants the blessings given to Abraham so that you may take possession of the land where you now reside as a foreigner, the land God gave to Abraham. Then Isaac sent Jacob on his way, and he went to Padam Aram to Lebanon. So you remember Jacob's got to be on the run, right? You remember what happened in the, in the previous chapter? Esau, <laughs> Esau's out to get him. And Isaac... I don't know if it's age or lack of parenting skills. He can't tell him to figure it out. But uh, son, your brother's going to kill you, so you better leave. So I'm going to bless you on the way out. That's that's where we are in the story. Isaac had has, but he's he's resigned himself at least in this story. Isaac has to what he knew was the Lord's will all along that the older would serve the younger, that Jacob, not Esau, would receive the birthright, and so, and so he sent Jacob on with a blessing. And, and some instructions. Do not take a wife from the daughters of Canaan. Uh, it did not turn out well for your brother. Uh, keep it in the family. Go find, go find your uncle. Go find some, someone to marry out of there. May God Almighty bless you. Isaac blessed Jacob in the name of God Almighty. That is, anytime you see God Almighty in uh, the NIV, which is, I think, a lot of your Bibles, uh, the old word, the Hebrew word is El Shaddai. El Shaddai, El Shaddai, da 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 da. Is that Amy Grant? Amy Grant. Uh, Amy Grant. Uh, but that's El Shaddai, one of the famous titles for God, uh, used used in Genesis 17, where God described Himself to Abraham with that phrase, "I am God Almighty, El Shaddai." So Abram passed that knowledge of El Shaddai to his son Isaac, who now passed it on to Jacob. And he first pronounced it a, uh, as a general blessing of prosperity upon, upon Jacob. And after this general blessing, he gave him specific, he, he gave the specific blessing from Abraham. 
uh, you will get the promise. Land, nation, a community of peoples. And as we know now, the, uh, the Messiah would come, come down this line. Jacob was by no means worthy of this blessing. Neither was Esau. Probably not Isaac or Rebekah in the story. But thanks be to God, he uses imperfect people for his perfect will. So Isaac sent Jacob away. Jacob would travel eastward to a region where his mother, Rebekah, was raised. Uh, he would not see his mom again. Mom would pass away before he come, would be able to come back. Uh, he, he will see Isaac again 20 years down the line when Isaac was truly, truly near death. So let's see what happens next. Six through nine. Thank you, Mary. Were there so few people that they had to marry within their families? I mean, he was going to marry a niece or a cousin. He was going to marry a cousin. The, the, it wasn't a well-populated area, yeah. but you knew your family. You, you didn't know these other folk. But you couldn't, like, just, you know, hop on a plane and go meet a new guy. <laughs> You're kind of like... Yeah, the right one was not there, or the Match.com or whatever online dating things we have right now. Um, well, it'd be like in a small town. So so the it's not like a family of four. They got they got servants, and like there's a there's a community of people kind of around them. Uh, keep it keep it here. Um, did anybody ever grow up in a small town? And maybe I'm we're a couple of generations away from this now. Where don't date anyone from that town. You date someone from this town. But yeah, but there was room to run. There was room. Yeah. Uh, if if you go to Israel Palestine now, it, they have so many millions of people all within such a small area. Here they. You're free to roam. They had they had their land issues, Abraham and Lot, and some other nations uh, making treaties. But you were it was fairly you were free to roam. But you could also imagine some different ethnicities, or maybe some different races, or different languages, or different. I can imagine. I can imagine. Just imagine now that my. My great 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 grandpa would say, "Hey, when you go to America, don't marry a Swede." He was German. Sure, he's Germans and Swedes, and I'm sure the Swedes probably say said the same about the Germans. And the, don't even talk about the Danish. <laughs> All right, verses. Where are we at? Six through nine. Now Esau learned that Isaac had blessed Jacob and had sent him to Paddan Aram to take a wife from there, and that when he blessed him, he commanded him, do not marry a Canaanite woman, and that Jacob had obeyed his father and mother and had gone to Paddan Aram, Aram whatever. <laughs> Esau then realized how displeasing the Canaanite women were to his father Isaac. So he went to Ishmael and married Mahalath, the sister of, ne anyway, Just and daughter <laughs> of Ishmael, son of Abraham, in addition to the wives he already had. And that's the Ishmael that we know from earlier. Uh, I don't have many notes on this because it's just uh, Esau, <laughs> Jacob got the blessing. And then maybe maybe it's because he doesn't like who I who who I married. I know how to fix this. I'll marry someone else in the family, and you know, just keep the collection going. Uh, the blessing and the birthright seemed important now to Esau, important enough to try to impress his father. Maybe just maybe, you know, something did happen to Jacob. He's he's Plan B now. Uh, he's determined to impress his father by marrying a non-Canaanite woman when he saw that Jacob had obeyed his father and his mother. Uh, Esau went to Ishmael. His, his uncle avoided the Canaanite women and married women from the family of his, of his uncle Ishmael. Aren't you so glad that you, you, we don't have family dynamics like this? 
Did your parents, did your, did your parents pick the person that you were going to marry? Did your parents nix a person you wanted to marry? We lived south of Omaha, and I got sick, and the doctor said, you really need to go west. So I went to Yellowstone Park as a savage that year and made beds. Well, I met a man there, and I married him. I didn't even come home. My mom and dad didn't even meet him until he was married. <laughs> so, yeah. It lasted 20 years till I killed him. <laughs> la, 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 I didn't kill him, no, but yeah, he had a heart condition and he passed away at 47. So, but yeah, okay. but my mom and dad didn't know him until I met him and brought, brought him home as a married. We're, we're at south of Omaha. South of Omaha, Tarkio and Rockport, west, just into Missouri, okay. Rockport. Rockport. I know right where you're at. I know. You're right off of the river. <laughs> All the firework stands. And Yellowstone had a lot less roads. Oh, you're not kidding? <laughs> Let's do... Oh, he has a dream. Look at the Jacob's dream at Bethel. Uh, 10 through 15. We'll do that whole paragraph. Jacob's <clears throat> dream at uh, Bethel. Jacob left Barsheba and sent out to Haran. When he reached a place, a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth, with its top reaching to heaven and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord thy God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are, are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until you have done what I have promised you. Set out for Haran. Jacob traveled east toward the ancestral lands of his grandfather and grandmother, Abraham and Sarah, and his mother, Rebekah. And he had a dream in this desolate wilderness. He had a significant dream. Uh, what do you use for a pillow? A rock. How does that sound? Hard sounds hard. They didn't. They didn't have pillows, did they? Nope. Uh, maybe. Maybe you, your skins are. You couldn't carry much. Mm -hmm. uh, most people just slept on the ground. And if if. If I was sleeping on the ground, maybe a rock would be comfortable, more comfortable than just on the rock ground anyway, right? Um, a lot of times they use metal uh, for, for a place. Uh, I saw at a museum once a, it was, it was kind of a wooden, well, it was, it, it, think rib. It was like a rib that had a little stand on it that people, people would use ribs in. I am so happy to live this time and place where that is not a thing. I can only imagine the strange uh, flood of emotions that Jacob is feeling right now. That, would, might, that might even constitute where this dream would come from. Uh, he's probably feeling fear, loneliness, isolation, excitement, anticipation. Do you remember what it was like when you got kicked out of the house? In a loving, kind, Christian way, they... Hmm? It was both fear and trepidation and joy and I can do things on my own. Oh no, I'm doing things on my own. Kind of feel. Usually people traveled in, in family groups. You didn't see a whole lot of people traveling alone. Now there's, there's dangers out there in them woods. Uh, and here he is. Uh, What's the word? Did it use a stairway? What was the word? Stairway. 
Any other Bibles say a different word than stairway? Ladder? He had a ladder. Two different things, aren't they? Stairways and ladders? In ancient Mesopotamia, uh, they, they had these structures called ziggurats. Think pyramids. You know, we always think pyramids like straight like this. Ziggurats were like one level, one level, one level. Imagine like stacking Legos together. Ziggurats. But they had they had like ramps going up these things so you can access all the levels. Chances are that's that's what was described here. Uh, not like a set of stairs just floating. Uh, not a ladder with rungs, but more of more of a ramp that you're going up to the balcony at some sporting event uh, where you're where you're just going up and up and up and up. At the top, of a lot of those ziggurats, though, there was a place um, a, a place of worship, a place for a deity, a place of uh, sacred significance. At the beginning of Genesis, did they try to build one of these things? Did they try to build a tower? Tower of Babel. So we can, uh, why, why'd they build it? So we could reach heaven and, yeah. Uh, that was the idea. God's up there. Closer we can get. Um, it's, it's almost amazing that uh, maybe even within uh, the lifetime of your parents or grandparents, uh, that the highest that anyone's ever gotten like on a, on a man-made structure was like three or four stories. That just just blows my mind. Like we, we, we didn't have any buildings taller than that, and you know there's no way to see anything from a bird's eye view. Mountain vistas were amazing because you finally got to see down. Uh, so they built pyramids and they built ziggurats and they tried to build build these structures. In Jacob's dream, we have access to heaven. That's kind of where this is going. We have access to heaven. Jacob knew now knew that God was closer than ever he than he ever thought before, and uh, there's a real access and interaction between heaven and earth. Uh, Spurgeon said, "The God of Bethel is, it, is that what he called himself? The God of Bethel." Somewhere he says that. There's another place in Genesis where he says that. The God of Bethel is a God who, who does concern himself with the things of the earth. He's not a God that just shuts himself up in heaven and, and, and lets the mortals play along. Ancient religions, we're, we're talking Zeus, Jupiter. They had their place, right? They didn't deal in the, in the, in the trappings of what human beings were doing. Uh, they, did, they, we had, they had their own stories. Every now and then they would play, but uh, for the most part, they didn't care about mortals. Our God kind of cares about mortals, so much so that he gave his only son, I've been told anyway. Jesus made clear in John chapter 1, he is, he is the access to heaven. Uh, that's, that's how we have access now. Not by, not by altars, not by, not by temples, but it's Christ. Temples and churches, those are instruments, but it's Jesus who gives us uh, the access to, to God the Father. I am the Lord your God, uh, the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac. In about 10 chapters, we're going to get him to start saying, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Yeah, you just kind of see the progression. He just keeps adding a kid as, as we go through the story. Uh Jacob had no doubt heard about the great God who appeared to Abraham and Isaac, but he never have, had a story himself. Now the same God met Jacob in a personal way. Now Isaac gave him a blessing. Here we have God confirming that blessing. This is what's good. He gave it to Abraham, he gave it to Isaac, and now God is giving it to Jacob. Land, a nation, a blessing. And I am with you. He said that, right? I am with you. Yes, I am with you. And will watch over you where? Wherever you go. Also different from the Canaanite gods. 
Every little town had their own little tiny, this, this is the deity that we worship. You go, you go to the next town over, this is the deity that we worship. You go to the next town, they're very localized gods. This God says, Where, wherever you go, wherever you go. And that's a promise also to you. Wherever you go. From the highest, from the highest mountain to the, to the deepest sea, where can we escape the love of Christ? Kind of got a shorter chapter today. Let's do six, 16 to the end. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone he had placed under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel, though the city used to be called Luz. Then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey I am taking and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear so that I return safely to my father's household, then the Lord will be my God, and this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house, and of all that you give me, I will give you a tenth." Surely the Lord is in this place. Jacob was right in sensing that the presence of the Lord was there. Uh, but it sounds like he thought that God was in some places and not in others. And of course, we know that to be, we know that to be false. There are certainly places where we feel closer to God than others. Do you feel close to God in our sanctuary? Yeah. Do you feel close to God at, uh, at Pine and Eagle? Probably not so much. You might be taking your life in your hands. You might meet the Lord, depending on the lights that are there. But in some places, we feel closer to God than others. And this, this was such a place. He did not know it was going to become that, though. Uh, King David, in Psalm 139, uh, where can I go from your spirit, or where can I flee from your presence? Uh, Jacob, but Jacob maybe put too much emphasis on this particular place. Uh, he, didn't, he didn't realize that if the presence of the Lord was not with him in every place, then God could never fulfill his promise to him. Uh, he, called it, he called it Bethel. Beth in Hebrew is house. Uh, El, we, like El Shaddai, God, uh, house of God. Other places before this, we hear about Bethel. The writers who, who wrote this, we call it Bethel, so we're going to call it Bethel. Does that make sense? I think, I think we talked about that before where, where uh, oh, that's where Philadelphia is going to go, even though Philadelphia is not there yet. Uh, Bethel. Um, can you think of another town that starts with Beth? Beth, Beth. Bethlehem. House of Bread. Bethlehem. Uh, we had a, uh, there was a, there was a cabin at our campsite. I'm trying to, oh, I forgot it. Ah, Beth, oh, Beth, oh, we're staying in Beth Shalom. That's, that's where, we're, that's where we would stay. Beth Shalom, house of peace, Shalom, peace, house of peace. Try telling that to 50 junior high kids. <laughs> this is a house of peace, but it was fun. Uh, Bethel would play an important, uh, maybe not glorious role in the Israel's history. Among all the cities of Israel, Jerusalem is named by far the most. Bethel comes in number two of all the cities, at least in the Old Testament. Uh, later, when speaking to Jacob, God referred to himself as the God of Bethel. Uh, Genesis 3. 30, 31, 32, we'll get to it in the next few days. Uh, Bethel would become a high place. So in the time of kings uh, and uh, chronicles and Samuel, uh, they had high places where they would put, put shrines, they would put places of worship on top of hills. And uh, especially during the idolatry days of judges, 
they had these high places, and uh, Bethel, Bethel would become one of them. Uh, sacrifice to idols. If God is with me, hold on. What's the, what was the first thing that Jacob? What was the very first word in chat in verse twenty that Jacob said? Very first word. Verse 20, then Jacob made a vow saying, if, what does if mean? Uh, or a little, little deceiver here is make, trying to make a contract. If you do this, then I will do that. If my kid came to me and said, if... Kid, we got to have a talk. I'm dad. There's no if. You are going to clean your room. Dad, if I brush my teeth, can I get some hot chocolate? Like, There's no if. You're brushing your teeth. Brush the ones you want to keep. That's the rule, right? If. If God will be with me, if God will watch over me, if he'll give me food to eat and clothes to wear, I don't see that in the promise earlier, if I return to my father's house, then the stone that I set up as a pillar will become a God's house. I am curious to know what happened to that stone now that I read this. I should have looked it up before I came here, but uh, I'm curious to know if that place actually became something. And if you do all this for me, then, then I might tithe. Then I might give to the church. Then I might. I know we don't do that today, right? God, if you love me, then I will go to church on Sunday. If you'll bless me, then I will help the Boy Scouts do their thing, whatever it is that you do, nonprofits. That's Jacob's mentality in all of this. An if and then kind of proposition. God's promise to Jacob was not based on Jacob's loyalty. God's promise to you is not based on your loyalty. God just loves you. Is it fair? I don't know, because I think, God, how can you love that person? But maybe that's why I'm not God. Because someone else is looking at me going, Pat, how can you love me? God was gracious enough not to take his covenant back when he saw such an unspiritual response from Jacob. But later on, we do hear that he is going to become the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Mm -hmm.